It's all about the Benjamins. What chance does a privateer have? Welcome to Silver Crown. What do you say to a factory ride? The riders don't give a shit about this number one plate. They're just excited about the $10 million of new cash for purse money. Some good purse money. So that always is uh, helpful. That is pretty much basically going to go to the last three rounds. I don't think the riders want to race 31 rounds. They'd rather the series be shorter, but hey, I mean, Tomac, he's only racing Supercross only. Right now, I'm only contracted for the Supercross races, which would be 17 rounds. I'm leaving it a little bit open at this point if I go race motocross, and that would lead into those SMX rounds. But as of right now, I'm more... But the majority of them are excited about the extra money. And I haven't seen any rules structured yet as if you win this super duper cross, then next year, are you able to, and, and I, I say that with a, a slight, it's a joke, right? The $10 million is really good for the sport. I get that. It, it's a comedic relief when I call it super duper cross. Cause you know, you had super moto, you got super cross, you got motocross. They took the word super from the like super bowl. Like I get it right. But just bear with me. I digress. The point I'm asking, the question I'm asking is if you win the super motocross series, are you going to be able to run a number one plate in Supercross and Motocross with a different color background? Like, is that going to be confusing because you're going to have a rider that potentially won Supercross and then a different rider that won Motocross? So you're going to have three different number one plates throughout the, the season? How does that work? As of right now, I don't think the riders really care about this overall championship you know, it, it's the inaugural super motocross. Is it going to become something that people are going to strive for? Probably yes. You know, that's the hope. That's why they're influxing so much money. But as of right now, the riders would rather focus on really the Super Bowl of the sport, which is Supercross. Yes, they're trying to change it. It's not going to happen overnight. I understand that. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. And I also want to thank everybody that has subscribed to the channel because it has helped out a bunch. You guys are awesome. I wish you guys all had a good Christmas. And I got a couple live shows planned this week. Friday, we're going to do a live show on who we think is going to do well at the Supercross, kind of go over the track and just, you know, banter and bullshit about racing. So make sure that you tune into that. We're going to do it about 1 p.m. Pacific time on Friday. So stay tuned. We're going to have four guests on the show, three to four guests, and we're going to try to do it every weekend. But anyway, this is Johnny F. and Hopper. Keep it WFO in 2023. Brop. But I'm not done yet. You thought the video was over with because I ended with the, the brop, right? No. Who is this helping financially? Yes, the riders, but what of the riders? What is the, the demographic of those riders? They're factory guys, and it's the teams. They're trying to prevent big teams and big riders going racing other series. I get it. It's, it's business. However, it's not helping out the privateers. They're saying the top 20 point scores from Supercross and Pro Motocross and 450 and 250 divisions automatically qualify. And there is 19 factory 450 riders, and there is 45 factory 250 riders that are racing Supercross. With added a few other guys for motocross that aren't racing Supercross, like Ryder D, Daxton, Deegan. You know, those would be added to those numbers as well. You know, so it's not really helping the sport from the bottom. It's helping the sport from the top, which I get it. And this is maybe a bigger plan to transition to the supremacy of like an F1 type series and where riders have to get on a factory team from either Loretta or Supercross Futures, which it kind of already works that way. However, guys are already on factory teams racing the amateurs, and I think it would be healthy to not have any factory teams at Amateur Nationals, you know, or Supercross Futures, because I believe those guys are still, you know, cheater motorcycles compared to the stock stuff that's on there, because 2022 proved anything. It proved that you could bring unobtainium shit to amateur races and basically get away with it. So we need to have a stock class compiled with this super motocross series 
if you're going to still allow privateers to get their pro licenses and sign up with in inferior equipment against the top top tier stuff or you just completely say hey this is just a factory class only because you've got enough guys for it just to be a factory class like i said 45 plus 250 guys on salary and then you've got 19 that to me seems like a pretty full gate it's the retention rate right that's where the argument goes with 31 races maybe if you had 15 races you would see the majority of the guys finish the series because they would have half the year to be able to recover anyway that is truthfully all i have to say <laughs>